What's up, my car maniacs out there? This is Karakabo, the forger of pain, 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 pain. I'm back with my thoughts and my impressions of the E3 2017 PlayStation press conference. And these guys, okay, before starting, let me just say something that I have to take out of my chest. Because lately, this couple of years, these guys uh, tell us like, hey, come to our press conference, come to LA, come here at E3, and we'll put you guys all together in a room for a marathon of trailers and gameplay, and um, you know, I might as well just watch that in Panama, in my place, and uh, yeah, it seems like I'm complaining, because I am complaining, but really, like, I don't know, I feel that uh, the past couple of years, uh, well, before that, they did like a whole show and, you know, the developers come out and uh, really, I'm not saying I'm missing that. Maybe I do. I don't know if you get, but if you saw the PlayStation press conference at home, that's practically, practically what happened. The only difference is that they did a couple of things where you saw the trailer and uh, you'll see the shots and it was spectacular, but, you know, more of that. Uh, later now they started with uh, you know some Egyptian music uh, sorry if I'm being racist I don't know but at the beginning I thought it was gonna be Assassin's Creed Origins but it wasn't it was Uncharted Lost Legacy and uh, yeah you, you know what to expect with all the set pieces and everything it looked amazing you know a lot of action some comedy you know that's what you expect of Naughty Dog you want the tusk you need my help. A thief. Collector of antiquities. A parasite who exploits our struggle in order to fatten her pockets. So that's a no? Felt like a no. Yeah, no complaints there. I was, I was exciting. I mean, Uncharted, uh, you can't go wrong with Uncharted. got the DLC for Horizon. Uh, I haven't played Horizon. I know, what a crime, right? But I haven't played it yet. Uh, but also, it looked pretty cool. It looked pretty interesting. I'm intrigued. I gotta play Horizon. And as I'm done beating that game, I'll get that DLC. Finally, we got to see more for Days Gone. And you know something, the zombie genre, because it is a genre, how many zombie games you can do like a top 20, maybe even a top 30, but I digress, that's all. Uh, the zombie genre, dude, it still has a lot of steam, and they are proving this with Days Gone also, man, like, uh, I was hooked. The zombies are like, Ugh! and uh, you could also compare it with the zombies in the World War World War Z movie. Like these zombies are not the typical zombies, like Ugh! slow and sluggish. No, dude, they come with vengeance and anxious fury. The cool thing is that it ended with a bear zombie, and they were like, oh my god, just be quiet, dude. be quiet. And then the bear goes like, Rah! and then like, oh shit, and boom, that's it with the trailer. But I think uh, the release date is 2018, so yes, uh, sadly, we still have to wait for Days Gone. But tonight, let's recognize the art of gameplay with a showcase of the most anticipated titles here at E3. So, without further ado, let's get back to the games. Something that I love about today's era of gaming is it's the scale. Uh, that has been happening since PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, uh, but I think God of War perfected it. Um, this game is Monster Hunter. I really am not too familiar with the franchise. Uh, I own a couple of Monster, you know, as a collector and as a sickie, but really haven't played Monster Hunter yet. But I was like, hold damn, like this game 
uh, I want to get to play it. Like he set up traps and he was, you know, taking cover that, um, I don't know, the T-Rex thingy saw him and it was pretty exciting. Uh, this big ass eagle pterodactyl attacked the the T-Rex the and uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna, probably gonna get Monster Hunter 2, but also 2018 next year. Now something I wasn't expecting, and just by mentioning, I'm getting chills in my skin. Shadow of the Colossus. Okay, it's not a sequel. It's not a remastered. It was a full remake from the graphics and the gameplay they were showing. Uh, you could notice. You could really notice it was a full-on remake. And um, I think that the graphics still hold up to this day. But, hey, welcome, dude. Come on. Bienvenido sea. I wouldn't mind, and I don't mind having that. But, yeah. Thanks a lot. Two of the infinite six. Gamora, we have Thanos. He raised you as his own. A game that I have been expecting for a while now is Capcom vs. Marvel Infinite. Uh, we got another demo, you know, cinematics and stuff, uh, story mode to be precise, to be exact. And uh, yeah, I mean, it looked pretty cool. Uh, we got Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins. We got, oh, who else uh, was there? Oh, we got uh, Black Panther, Rat Spencer from Bionic Commander, Rocket Raccoon. So we saw a lot of new characters and some, you know, awesome news. And, you know, I have to wait till I get to Panama because I have my PlayStation here. I'll probably play it in the E3 floor. Why not? But is there's a playable demo right now. Like, I know when this video is gonna come out, but you can go ahead and download the demo and freaking play it. And lucky you, I guess. Uh, but I am still disappointed. Well, I think, I hope I'm wrong, but I think we're not getting any X-Men characters. I mean, that was a given. They've been, we've been talking about and speculating in the internet that that's not gonna happen because of the rights. They're focusing more on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you know, by watching this trailer and the past couple of trailers, yeah, also we got zero, so yeah. I'm never too hyped about the Call of Duty franchise. And you guys, you know, if you follow the Forge of Pain, you know that. Uh, I have nothing against the games. I know it's sometimes it's more than an update. My nephews love it. Uh, but I was pretty excited with this um, cinematic. And it wasn't just cinematic. It was actually, we got a lot of gameplay for this uh, Call of Duty World, World, I have trouble with that freaking letter. World War II. WW2, if you will, the second big one. Uh, so the, the thing that you guys are gonna, I mean, maybe it was more exciting because of that. It looked awesome, but it was like, you know, being there, that's, that's, I think that was my favorite thing about, you know, being the, in the press conference, you know, live and, you know, like physically. It was like, you know, an explosion happened and, it, and like you know, some pyro and fire and boom, everything was happening, you know, uh, outside of the screen. And yeah, well, that was pretty exciting, but like, okay, really the game, you know, we're joking aside and everything, uh, it got me also interested. And it's really hard to get the Forger of Paint interested in a Call of Duty game. Let's talk about VR. Uh, okay, first of all, I think VR is a gimmick, but 
that's for another video. Some games do it right. Some games do it meh. And uh, Skyrim VR. Yeah. Uh, Bethesda's giving us uh, Fallout 4 VR. And now Skyrim VR. And to be honest, I wasn't too excited. I mean, I'm going to try it. But yeah, that's the thing. I'm going to try it. I'm going to get a bit freaking Skyrim VR. You know, I can't imagine myself wearing that head strap. You know, every evening or every freaking day and putting, you know, maybe um, 200 hours in Skyrim. You know, that's exhausting. Also, Fallout. I'm a big Fallout fan. You know that. And, uh, you know, maybe Doom. Yeah, probably Doom is a little more beatable and bearable in VR. So, uh, what am I saying? That, yeah, I'm not too excited about Skyrim VR. We got a couple of new IPs. Intellectual properties from Price Place. Blah, 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 blah. PlayStation, and um, I think it was Starchild. Uh, okay, I might be mistaken. Like I said, I took some notes, but there was a lot of things going on. I think it was like, uh, no, uh, I forgot. One of those IP was Inpatient, and not as in I'm impatient. No, as in Inpatient, as you know, that's a play on words. Never mind. The thing is that, uh, you know, it was first person. I kind of liked it. It reminded me of an indie horror, uh, freakish, boom, mind, uh, playing mind games title. Uh, yeah, I, we didn't we didn't get much. It just, you know, it was just like uh, the psychiatrist talking to you. And I always think that um, a good setting for a horror game or a psychological thriller is an asylum. And... You could say you were like in a mental asylum, and, but yeah, that was impatient. No, there's not too much to say about it. I'm kind of disappointed uh, with this press conference was because we didn't get Final Fantasy VII. I mean, it's been a while. Uh, what's going on with Final Fantasy VII? Not even a release date for the first episode. But, you know, that's okay. That's okay, guys, because Square has us covered. We got... Final Fantasy 15, the fishing game. Like, really? Like, freaking really? A fishing game? That's your, that's your spin-off square? But yeah, we got, eh, I don't care. We got a Stuart Little game. Yay. Okay, it's not Stuart Little. Is this, uh, was it Moss or Mouse? Uh, this little, well, Mouse, duh. It was a platformer. It was pretty cute. Um, there's not much to say about it. I saw something that it was kind of uh, off-putting for me because there was this light uh, that was, I think, opening the doors for the mouse and the path. And please don't let this be a VR game, please. Uh, let it be a cute platformer. Why not? It was, you know, pretty cute, pretty colorful. I like the ending where. The little mouse has to, you know, fight this gigantic uh, snake. But just don't let it be VR where you just, you know, you just open the path to the to the mouse. I don't, I, I still don't know what to say about this game. Another game that I was pretty hyped last year's E3 was God of War 4. And uh, now, you know, I'll, you notice that uh, Kratos' kid, I don't think he has a name yet, um... Also, you know, on a side note, I wonder who's the mother? You know, Kratos has been banging everyone, you know, left and right. And uh, yeah, uh, who the hell's the mother? God knows. No pun intended. Uh, but really, yeah. Um, also, the scale, God of War, is known for, you know, upping the ante and everything uh, with the PlayStation console. Yeah, duh. And it looked amazing. Uh, they were like this little boat, and you saw like what an eye, is this? Uh, you know, like that. And it was bigger than Kratos and his son together. And it was like, damn. And um, the snake talked to the to the boy and Kratos, and Kratos like, hey, what's he? What's that snake saying, boy? And the kid like, oh, that snake wants to help us. And yeah, I I don't know why. Like I said, I know who the mother is, but the kid has like a different. Uh, he can. Talk to snakes for some reason. And, uh, well, maybe uh, God of... Yeah, maybe uh, God of War... Uh, maybe Kratos fucked Voldemort. 
one of my favorite, uh, I was going to say indie, but he's not indie, but a uh, developer that, you know, he does games. He doesn't pump out games every freaking year. It's Quantic Dreams. Quantic Dreams. Uh, David Cage. I love you, David Cage. Mwah. Yes, the first Quantic Dream game that I played was Indigo Prophecy, also known as Fahrenheit. You know, you owe it to yourself to play that game. Uh, Beyond Two Souls was, was kind of meh. Uh, loved Heavy Rain. And, uh, yeah, Detroit Become Human. Uh, it's, you know what it sounds. They're androids, and they're really trying to become human. They're sentient, and they're like, you freaking humans. And they're doing a revolution, the revolution. But, yeah, it's pretty interesting. Also, uh, Quantic Dreams has always been known for multiple endings and, like, you know, a lot of branches in the story. And this one it doesn't have, like, two or three, and every decision you make, uh, it affects the ending or the outcome of some characters. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, that's coming. No, wait a minute. I think they didn't announce a release date, so I don't know yet. I don't know about that. I've said it once, and I'm going to say it again. I'm not a big Destiny fan. Uh, I wasn't in the choo-choo or Destiny hype train. And, um, well, uh, this trailer, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's pretty decent. It's, it's better, way better than Destiny 1. Uh, like, they have personalities. We got this big, gigantic guy. Now, the PlayStation version has, like, exclusive content, like, you know, weapons. We got, like, a PvP map. Uh, you know, I was gonna say wardrobe, well, armor, and you know, some exclusive stuff. I, I guess we still have to see the uh, the Xbox version, but yeah, we got exclusive stuff for Destiny too. Yay! Like I said, I'm not a big Destiny fan, so hey, don't judge me. They say like they were gonna finish with this great developer, and uh, I thought like, oh my God, freaking Hideo Kojima, that's gonna be Death Stranding, and I mean. It was like, uh, it was bittersweet because it wasn't Hideo Kojima. It was Insomniac with the new Spider-Man game. And like I said, uh, bittersweet because I fucking love Spider-Man. He's like, you know, uh, it, for me, my favorite superheroes, it's Batman and Spider-Man. And yeah, man, it looked freaking awesome. The variety of things you could do, you know, with the web and uh, the way Spider-Man was swinging. And it looked freaking awesome. For me, my favorite Spider-Man game was Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 2. Uh, still, best Spider-Man game. Let's hope this one, uh, yeah, surpasses Spider-Man 2. Also, uh, some stealth sections. Uh, it was like he was like, you know, webbing and then up and right and everything, and uh, he was, you know, fucking people up with the web. That was cool. Uh, wasn't expecting that, uh, you know, stealth mode. Uh, what else I saw about this game? Uh, like, the way Spidey moved and everything. Like I said, it has a lot of vari vari variety. Uh, you even saw, like, a first-person um, section. It was, you know, it was small. It was kind of gimmicky because you saw, like, he had, like, the two uh, arms like this. Hey, you had to press uh, L and R, L and R, you know, like this. And uh, yeah, but that was, it was kind of cool, you know, looking at that first person uh, Spidey view, if you will. And, and that was it. That was it. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm still not too sure how to feel about this. Like I said at the beginning of the video, uh, I think they're just like, hey, come and watch some videos. And you just sit around in a big room full of gamers. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I said like, like, come on, I could be doing this, you know, I don't know. Um, the other thing is that I'm kind of disappointed. I'm kind of disappointed because, yes, I was expecting worse. Shenmue 3, no Shenmue 3. The Last of Us 2, no Last of Us 2. Death Stranding. Uh, maybe it was just me. Oh, worse, Resident Evil 2, the remake. Uh, I don't know. It was for me, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like great either. It was just, it, it was okay. It was okay, and um, 
yeah, I don't know what else to say, guys. So I'm going to give it a thumbs in the middle with this press conference. I never do that. I just made that up. Guys, as always, leave your comments. What do you think about this PlayStation E3 conference? Hey, leave a like in this video because that freaking helps me a lot. And subscribe if you haven't. Just caress that subscribe button and lick it. But, you know, lick it with your mouth because that otherwise it would be weird. I'm going to shut up now. As always, this is Karakabo, the Forger of Pain, saying to you, like or die.